attention class. Dr. Barnes, recreating some lost material to support your learning and understanding. The video that we're doing today is major types of scientific conduct. However, if you remember from last week, the types of videos that we had before were duplicated. This is going more specifically towards the types of scientific misconduct relevant to the publishing company. The previous video focused on the major types of scientific misconduct relevant to the researcher. Now, when it comes to the publication company, there's two issues. The first is research misconduct. Research misconduct is defined as fabrication, creating results that did not occur, falsification, which is more than likely towards the end, in which you may have accurately done the research, the results did not come out the way that you would like, so as a result, you made the results different from what actually occurred. Plagiarism in proposing, performing, or reviewing research, which essentially means that you were stealing someone else's ideas, stealing someone else's design, intent, and also the process all involved in the research. It is inappropriate to steal another person's idea. This happens many times at rich or more endowed institutions in which researchers can get projects off the ground a lot quicker than let's say a smaller institution like Cheney University. Now, it's important to understand that research misconduct does not include honest or differences of opinion. That is not the realm of research misconduct. The next issue is publication misconduct. Publication misconduct includes plagiarism, meaning it was previously published in another journal and you're publishing it here. One of the priorities of all journals is to publish research that advances knowledge and science. If it's already been published, it's not doing that. So as a result, that's considered publication misconduct. Inappropriate authorship, which usually happens on the campus in which you might have multiple researchers on a project. And the first author is usually reserved and should be reserved for the individual who has contributed most primarily to the research project. Many times people will switch to order, causing issues on campus amongst colleagues and falsely doing so intentionally is considered publication misconduct. The other aspect would be duplicating submission, making multiple submissions, or overlapping publication. Essentially, as I said before, all research must be new and advancing science. If you are duplicating work that's already been done or submitted to another journal, submitting it to multiple journals at the exact same time, or you're creating research that is using a part of previously published research, but then extending on it. Again, the publication and the journal would like to only focus on the end. Packaging it as if the first part is relevant when it's really overlapping what's already been published is falsely representing the research. The Lamy publication, which I had to look up, is essentially the same as the one aspect we talked about before. But essentially, it is trying to double dip, repurpose, and reuse research that's already been published previously. Now, which is more important? When it comes down to the perspective of publication, journal, research misconduct is thought to be greater concern than a publication misconduct. You might ask why. Well, let's sit back and think about this. Publication misconduct does include plagiarism. However, it's plagiarism of work that is real and hopefully does have value. The publishing company can look the other way, sit back and make an apology and keep it moving. Fabrication and falsification, you might argue, are important. However, we use and adopt a scientific method. All research eventually will be duplicated. And they actually have the stance that over time, falsified or fabricated research, if it is truly one of those, will be weeded out and identified because researchers in the future will not sit back and find similar results. And that article will just essentially not be utilized, will not be cited, and will be forgotten. Inappropriate authorship, to a certain extent, that's just personality differences and conflicts on the campus. We can ignore that. 
And then the duplication of research or the salami publications, again, it's still genuine and real research. So the publication company is not too much concerned with that. Over time, it will weed itself out.